My name is Kelly Ishmael, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I use the color grading tool in Lightroom to enhance the golden hour light in my photo. So just a little background on my photo. Uh, this is a shot that I took a little earlier this week. Signs of life in the yard, which just makes me so happy. Um, I took this photo in the morning. I don't know, it was around eight o'clock or so. The light was, or the sun was up, but it was just starting to come over my fence. And I just love the way that it adds this really pretty golden glow around my saucer magnolia trees, some of these out of focus areas. It makes the prettiest bokeh and a little bit of rim light here on this main focal part of the image. Um, so what I would like to do in this photo is just emphasize the golden hour light a little bit more. And to do that, I'm going to use the color grading tool. But before I do that, I'm going to do a little bit of editing and I'm going to start by cropping my photo and I'm going to just grab this handle. I'm going to pull in just a little bit more, just kind of zoom in, I guess, a little tighter on this area and move it around to um, just adhere to this uh, rule of thirds or golden ratio grid here. And I think, I think somewhere in here is okay. Maybe just try not to lop off the top of this area and just taking a look at the preview. I think that'll be, I think that'll be just fine. Maybe somewhere around here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe just pull it down just a little bit more. There, that looks good to me. Um, if, if I wanted to get really serious, I could bring this into Photoshop and remove this branch. I don't know. I might do that. Let me get through the whole thing and then I'll decide if I want to go to the trouble. I'm still enjoying my pretty presets, Muse collection uh, presets, and Muse One is the one that I've been using quite a lot. I do, uh, I want, I do love the overall look, kind of that washed out vintagey look, but I want to back it off a little bit because I don't want it quite so washed out. So I'm going to use this slider and move it to the left a decent amount. That brings a little bit of color back into the uh, photo, and especially this time of year when things, um, the yard and the garden are starting to show a little more color. Uh, I appreciate that in the photo. Okay. Also, I am going to warm up the white balance just a tiny bit. Um, it was, it, it's a little bit, even though the sun was coming up behind the fence, it was a little bit shady where I was standing and the uh, tree, the main part of the tree was in the shade. So I think warming it up a tiny bit um, just kind of helps to enhance that golden glow that I'm trying to go for in this photo. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of texture and clarity. Um, you can use a slider. Sometimes I tend to just type it in. It's a little bit easier. And I usually stick around, for nature shots like this, I usually try to stay around um, 10 to 15 um, on that slider um, just because I don't want it to look overly grainy or um, just to kind of keep a natural look to it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right, um, my lens corrections were applied when I imported my photo. Um, for now, I don't think that I am going to um, apply a vignette. Let me get through the rest of it and then I'll see about that too. I am gonna come up to the basic panel because I would like to um, just overall lighten the image a little bit. Once again, it was in the morning. It was just such a beautiful morning. And I, I really want to enhance that kind of light, bright, um, up, upbeat type of feeling. Less moody and more happy. That's how I was feeling that day. Okay, that seems good to me. I am also going to move this shadow slider to the right to um, add a little more light here, especially in this focal uh, area, just to add a little bit more uh, detail there. I might use, um, I might use a masking tool, actually. Uh, I'll click on this brush tool and just brush over this, this specific bud, because I do want to, um, I do want to see all of the beautiful color of that bud here. 
Okay, and then um, for the preset, I'm going to use Lighten here, and that should lighten that up a little bit. I can also use the Shadow, shadow Slider. Let me make sure I'm clicked on this. So I'm going to increase the exposure, and then I'm also going to increase the shadows. There we go. Yeah, I think that's great. That'll be great. Okay, that'll that'll be fine for there. I'm going to come back now to this main panel. Um, what I would like to do to enhance, like I said, that golden hour, that golden glow, what I'm going to do is use the color grading panel here. And the, the parts that I just absolutely adore are these little gold circles, this um, bokeh, these out of focus areas in the trees beyond where I was standing. I just love that. I just find that to be super magical. I love bokeh of all types, but specifically, and especially this time of year, um, I just find it just wonderful in a photo. And I would like to enhance that. And so I am going to use the highlight. Um, I'm going to use the highlight region, or I'm going to um, target this highlight region because all of these are going to be lighter areas of the photo. So those are going to be affected by the highlight region adjustments. And I could do it here in this pan in this um, where it shows all three, or I can select just the highlight uh, section by clicking on this button and now I have a little more control. It's kind of a little a little better view of just the highlights. And so it's already, uh, with this preset, it's already selected this warm golden color for highlight toning. And so that that's a good color for me. I think what I would like to do is just increase the saturation of it a little bit. Once again, Color grading is one of those things that a little bit goes a long way. So if I just completely turn off the color grading, um, if I hold down this over this little eyeball, you can see it's uh, removing that from my photo. And now, so this is what the photo looks like without any color grading. And then this is what it looks like with color grading. And it's subtle, um, but it does add a little more warmth in those highlight regions of the photo, the lightest areas of the photo. I don't wanna do too much. So here is an example of too much, in my opinion, um, highlight or adding this tone to the highlight. I'm gonna back that way off. So it started out with a saturation of around three. And I think if I pull it back to a saturation, I don't know, maybe in this eight or 10 area, I think that would be enough to enhance or kind of make that uh, bokeh just a little more golden. Once again, here it is without any color grading. And then here it is with the color grading. Just adds that extra little bit of warmth, especially in those bokeh areas. So that looks just great to me. I don't know, let's just see. Let's just see if I bump it up a little bit more if it's too much. I don't know. This is without, this is with. That might be just a little bit too much for me. I'm gonna back it back it down to about 12. And I think that is exactly what I was, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Okay, with color grading out of the way, the one thing that I haven't done is added any sharpening or um, denoise. Uh, my ISO was at 1250, um, just a kind of a low-ish light um, situation. So I had my ISO up just a little bit. Um, so I will go ahead and add some noise reduction here. I can just do it manually. It's not super grainy and it's not a too, super tight zoom in. So I think just applying some manual noise reduction is fine. And I usually pull it over here somewhere in the halfway point and that smooths out the background and that looks terrific for me. I am also going to apply some sharpening and I can hold down my option key while I use these sliders. So if I um, use this slider with the option key down, you can see a little bit where it's being applied. It, it 
changes it to a black and white image so you can kind of see the effects without the distraction of the color. So if I move the sharpening over quite a bit, now again, I'm gonna hold down my option key and I'm going to move the masking slider. So that is going to mask off the effect of the slider everywhere but the white areas. Sometimes it takes my computer a little bit to catch up when I'm recording videos, so sorry about that delay. Okay, so I want to mask off the sharpening everywhere but the main elements of the photo. And you can see here, it's just around the main branches and main buds and a little tiny bit of the background. So I think that'll be fine right there. All right, that looks great. Sharp, reduce some of the noise. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that. So in terms of a vignette, I don't want to add an all over vignette because I, I like, I wanna preserve this light area or over the top. Once again, it was morning, it's starting to feel a little bit like spring. I just, I'm kind of craving that light bright look, but I might add just a tiny bit of a vignette along the bottom. Um, it's just personal preference. I will see what it looks like. Um, I'm gonna choose the linear gradient and then I'm going to click below the photo and I'm going to pull upward. And I'm gonna maybe pull up to right around the bottom, this main bottom branch. And then I'm going to use this darken preset. So that's just gonna darken that bottom area a tiny bit. Here it is without that little bit of a gradient, that little bit of vignette at the bottom, and here it is with. And I kind of like that, that deep, the deeper tones at the bottom. I think that's really pretty and it gives it a little bit of a grounding effect. It's super subtle, just a tiny bit of an expo uh, reduction in exposure. So I'm very, very pleased with that. As I'm looking at my photo now, um, a couple of things stand out to me. There's a little bit of this um, web-like, um, just the tiniest bit. That doesn't really bother me. It kind of catches the light. It's a remnant of maybe spider webs or something from the season before. That doesn't really bother me at all. What does kind of stand out to me is there's some kind of a distraction right here. And then there's also this large branch right here. Um, there's a little bit more of a this branch to me. They just they're a little bit of a distraction in the photo Lightroom has some really great tools for small areas to um, Do spot healing and things like that for me though if I'm going to be doing larger areas uh, I like pulling my photos into Photoshop. I have the a Photoshop Lightroom package. So um, since I do have that capability to do, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this photo into Photoshop. And I'm just gonna select Edit in Photoshop with a right click, and then it takes just a minute for it to open up there. Okay, I'm here in Photoshop, and um, I am going to uh, hit Z on my keyboard so that I can uh, zoom into, I'm going to start here with this small, I'm going to start with the smallest thing first. So I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And what do I want to do? What kind of tool? Um, I think what I'm going to do is, um, do I want patch? Um, clone? I think that's what I'm going to do. So I am going to use my right bracket key and I'm going to um, just make my uh, brush here a little bit bigger. And I am going to write, or I'm gonna hold down the option key, and then I'm gonna click on this area right here because I want to paint basically this color onto this part. I'm looking at my opacity and flow. So I've got a, a good amount of opacity and flow right here. Once again, I'm super zoomed in, so I don't think that you're going to see this that much uh, when I zoom back out, but I'm just trying to be as precise as possible. And I'm going to move down here in this other brown area. I'm going to hit option on my keyboard, or this would be the alt if you're working on a PC. Option here to kind of select that color, that pattern, and move in here. This kind of teal green color 
is a little bit of chromatic aberration. I think some lenses, and especially if you're shooting with backlight, some lenses are worse than others about it. Um, backlight is especially, um, can be especially troublesome for some lenses. It doesn't really bother me all that much. Um, if I want, I can come back and deal with that. We'll, I'll bring it, once I get finished here, I'll go back in Lightroom and see about handling it. It's really not bothering me that much though. And once again, remember that we are super zoomed in. Okay, last one, option key, grab some color and just move over this area. Just kinda add a little more color in here. And then, oops. Um, I think I'm gonna use the bracket key, make it a little bigger, option click here, and just kinda, oops, that was a little, little carried away. Maybe make that a little smaller so it doesn't, That'll be fine. Like I said, once we are zoomed back out, I don't think anybody's gonna notice. Okay, let's command zero, come back out. Totally fine, really. Oh, let me take the grid off here. Um, probably no one would notice but me anyway, but I think that's I think that's fine. All right, let's deal with this big tree branch. Oops. Um, I'm gonna hit Z on my keyboard, there we go. Let's click on this, let's zoom in here a little bit. I think for this, I am going to try the content aware tool. Uh, that's usually pretty good about um, taking, taking care of things like this. I'm gonna choose the lasso tool and I am just going to drag around this area. Ooh, I missed that top part, didn't I? All right, I'm going to right click and I'm going to fill, and I'm gonna use the content aware fill, and um, leave this color adaptation checked, and I'm gonna say okay. It, you never know exactly what you're gonna get with content aware, but that, I love that. I just, it felt distracting to me in the corner. I am less hopeful about this big tree in the, uh, center. Um, let's let's just see what happens if I select this area. If it doesn't if it doesn't work out, I'm not going to be terribly upset about it. But let's just see what happens. Well, now that's not bad. That's not bad at all, at all. Yep this this piece right here is a little bit distracting to me. Let's see. Let's see what happens if I just do that small piece. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, it, it just it was just less of a distraction there. Um, maybe this guy, maybe these two guys, just to keep that background kind of more smooth, less, less texture, less color in the background of it. So the foreground really stands out. Well, okay, if I'm gonna do that, I might as well do this one too. Having good luck so far. Okay, yeah, I'm super happy. That looks great. So I'm gonna just hit save on my keyboard. And then if I come back to Lightroom, it will create a copy of that for me. So here is my original image before Photoshop. And here it is after Photoshop. And I just love that it took out some of those distractions or those bigger chunks of color in the background and really brought the focus into this um, this main part of my photo. I'm very pleased with that. Okay, well, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Um, a little extra bonus Photoshop in there in case that might be something you'd like to do. Um, I do really love, though, that extra little golden bokeh. Just everything I want this time of year. And um, as always, please let me know if you have any questions. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.